What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a listener question that emailed me. I won't say his full name. I'll just say his first name is Jason. So, Jason, if you're watching, thanks for sending this through. Let me just read it for you really quick. Hi, Matt. I'm a graphic web designer, and I want to develop my freelance business. I've recently come across Divi. I was doing some research and came across your website. I was hoping you could give me some sincere advice and insight. I have a few questions. First question, can I base my freelance career on Divi? Well, uh, I think you can. I mean, and I think at the end of the day, as you get through your freelancing career, two months, two years, 20 years, what you end up finding out is that these are just tools and your customer, unless you are specifically building for the Divi market, they're not going to care what tools you use. So certainly you could build your career off of Divi and continue your career off of Divi. It's one of the most popular page builders. Now there are some nuances, of course, if you watch all of these page builder competitions playing out, be it through you know YouTube reviews like stuff that I do, or blog reviews and testings and things like that, what you really want to do is sink your teeth into a tool that you know is going to be around for hopefully the longest length of your career. And a few things that you, a few ways you can tackle this, of course, with WordPress coming online with Gutenberg and that, that whole ecosystem is still yet to really flourish in terms of WordPress as a page builder and Gutenberg as a page builder. You might look at it in two different camps. You might do, you know, some really basic sites with just using Gutenberg. And when folks want to do some real customized sites uh, and some more custom designs, that's when you look towards a Divi or another page builder. My own personal take is I really put my money into Beaver Builder. Um, you know, there's a lot of back and forth. There's some features that they don't have, that Divi has, that Elementor has, that they don't have. And, you know, you can go many ways with this. But for me, I look at the company and the support and where their long-term goals are. For me, my money goes to Beaver Builder, but I see nothing wrong with picking a well-supported uh, page builder like a Divi or an Elementor to start and to flourish your freelance career. Uh, second question, are Divi child themes popular? Uh, again, this sort of piggybacks off of that. You know, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't really think it matters if they're popular. Uh, maybe the better question is, are there enough for you to start with? And I don't have that answer. Um, I would say that you want to do some research and find the child themes that you want. And again, if you're structuring yourself in the typical web designer, uh, web developer fashion, what you don't want to do is uh, bite off more than, than you can chew. And I think that a lot of people look at page builders and saying, I can do anything, I can build anything, and heck, I am a WordPress developer now. And that's a fair statement. Um, you know, I don't doubt anybody's uh, development skills, but we all have different experiences and we all have more experiences than others. Um, picking a child theme is great if you want to have like a collection of child themes that you start with um, and then get into selling those, you know, layouts to different sets of customers. That's a, that's a smarter move. Um, essentially, what you will find out is you don't want to customize a website for every single customer unless you're charging really big money to really uh, use up all of that time and communications with a customer. I won't go too deep into all of that in this video, uh, but if you found yourself with a collection of two, three, four different types of child themes for Divi that you're comfortable with and presenting to customers, especially as you start out early on, you know, I wouldn't go too far off the beaten path. Uh, sort of a long answer to the question, uh, which is, you know, I don't know if they're popular, but you can certainly find a whole bunch that you can use to base your business off of. Uh, number three, what is the best way to build a freelance career? This is a tough question. There's a lot uh, to do, a lot that goes into this. And again, what I'll do is I'll pull from answer number two is I won't, you know, I, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew when I'm selling to a customer. And that's even specific to today, right? And been doing this for 10, 15 years, however long it's been. What you really don't want to do is over promise in the beginning and under deliver, right? You want to, you know, under promise and over deliver. And I think a lot of people, they start to see what they can do with WordPress and the flexibility of it with plugins and themes and page builders. And they just say, well, I can build anything for anyone. Just give it to me. And, you know, if you're, as long as you're paying me, I can do it. Um, that's usually the kiss of death very early on. Um, and when people start to bleed into the category of a developer when they're really just a designer or they're not a designer and they're more of a developer or they're neither, I think what you really have to do is be super transparent with your customer and know what you can really deliver and make it less about the design of a website and building out the website because anybody can do that. And quite frankly, anybody who's starting a business 
can be lured into a Wix or a Squarespace so that they can do it themselves. You really have to define what you're going to be really good at for a particular set of customers for a particular budget in the beginning and use all of that as lessons and building blocks to build up your portfolio and grow from there. Number four, how realistic is this to expect? Uh, how realistic is it to expect that this is to be the sole source uh, of income? Well, you can build a great career with it, <laughs> and I don't think that uh, there's any kind of limit uh, or minimum in this scenario. Now, if you're looking just to repurpose Divi and you're just looking at it as how well can I build out websites based on Divi and sell and resell that, that might be too limiting. But if you're building yourself a service-based business, I love service-based business because there is no limit and you can charge whatever your brand expectation aligns with. So maybe in the beginning, you're only charging between five and 500 and $1,000 to get out a website. Some people might freak out about that number, but just hear me out. In the beginning, you're really learning uh, from these experiences and how to do sales and how to support a customer. And then of course, build the actual product that you're promising them. So there's a lot of things at play. And what you want to do is give yourself a sensible goal. How much do you want to earn, you know, this quarter, this month, this year, whatever. Um, and hopefully that you're striving towards that goal. It's not just about making the money, but it's about finding the right customers and building the stuff that you feel is being a, of a great service to that customer, right? So if you find a sweet spot of $5,000 per website and your customers are loving the experience and you're happy with the work that you're putting out, a couple of those a year, you're, you're upwards of fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, you know, as you grow the business. Of course, build in some support and other consulting fees in there, you know, maintaining WordPress, doing some marketing stuff, connecting to third-party APIs and automation and things like that. And you can really find yourself building a pretty powerful uh, marketing web content agency, SEO kind of thing, maybe, if you want to go that far. But you can certainly build a business out of this, and I would you know, implore you to do that. All right, Jason, I hope that answers some of those questions that you sent over. I hope anybody else watching this found some good value in that. Let me know what you think for Jason in the comments below. How would you position yourself just starting out? How would you negotiate with customers? What price point would you set? And would you use Divi? Um, keep all the fanfare down a little bit. I understand Divi, Beaver Builder, Elementor. We want to have that discussion, but let's just talk about finding the right tools and building the business for Jason to help him out. It's Mariport.com, Mariport.com slash subscribe to join the mailing list. Thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you want more. We'll see you in the next video.